friends, I'm Miss Deanna and I'm here at the Bell Road branch of the Newburgh Chandler Public Library. And I'd like to share an adventure in art with you today. But before we do that, I want to read you one of my favorite poems by Christina Rossetti. Who has seen the wind? Neither I nor you. But when the leaves are trembling, the wind is passing through. Who has seen the wind? Neither you nor I, but when the trees bow down their heads, the wind is passing by. Let's think about that a second. If your art teacher told you, you need to draw the wind, how would you draw it? A lot of people like to draw the wind this way. A big blustery cloud, and he's blowing, and he's blowing. And he's blowing. But the other way we can draw the wind is to make things that catch the wind. This week in the library, I found a book called Mobiles and Other Paper Wind Catchers. And one of my goals here at the library is to show you books that we have in our collection and then to tell you what my opinion on that book is, whether it's a good book, whether it was hard to follow the directions, things like that. And so this week, I want to share with you this book, and it's written by Noel Fiorata and Phyllis Fiorata. Should we take a closer look? Let's do it. Okay, friends, like I said, we're going to talk about this book today. And first off, one of the things I really like about this book is it's good for people who are strong readers and for those people who are just learning to read. Every page is its own project. It gives you lots of clear pictures on one side, some written directions, and different steps or things that you can do. But if you don't read, or if you are just learning to read, I think just looking at this book is going to give you a lot of really great ideas. So one of the ideas in the book that I liked were these two right here. On this side, it's called loops. And on this side, it's called rings. And I have made uh, a couple of these. And you may have seen these hanging behind me when we were filming earlier. This is the single loop. And this is the double loop. What's great about making these windmobiles is that a lot of the stuff you're gonna have in the house. So we need some basic supplies like markers, glue, a stapler tape. If you have them, you can use a tape instead of glue, or you can use a stapler instead of tape, but these are interchangeable. Lots of string or thread or yarn, um, scissors, scrap paper. And then you can also use straws or sticks, or paint sticks, or popsicle sticks, whatever you can find in your house will work. Some extra things, if you have them, that you can add just for fun, would be fancy paper, like some colored paper, wrapping paper, if it's stiff enough. These are pipe cleaners, maybe some buttons, pom-poms, crepe paper, or even some leftover ribbon. All of these can be added too, but you don't have to have them. It's just something you can do for fun. So back to our spirals. To make the single spiral, you need one short paper. And then three papers beside it that are three different lengths. And you start with the shortest one in the middle and you're going to either tape or glue the top and the bottom. And you'll do the same thing on the other side with the same length of paper. The trick is to remember to always start with the shortest paper. Now the book says to use glue. I'll be honest, Miss Deanna doesn't always have the patience for glue. 
So today we're going to use our stapler. So I line them up on one side, staple them, line them up on the other side and staple them. And you don't have to stop at three pieces of paper. You could do more pieces of paper. You could do less pieces of paper. You could do all the same color paper. You could do different color paper. And then when you're done, especially if you make a bunch of these, you hang them on the string and they will catch the wind and they will go around in a brightly colored circle. Now I've only done one side, but when you do both sides, it will look like this. To do a double one, it's the same process, except instead of starting at the ends, you find the center of all the papers. Put that in the center of your middle paper. Remember, start with the shortest paper. And then you create these double rings. And this will also spin in the wind. The other one that I liked was this ring, and it uses two different color rings. So you fold two pieces of paper and you cut out these rings, and then you put them together. Now, in order for them not to run into each other, you need to cut a little gap between each one. I ended up choosing blue and pink but you can see already they're starting to turn around. The other thing you'll notice is that Miss Deanna's does not look as nice as the one in the book. They're not even circles, they're more like ovals. That's okay. This is your artwork, you make it the way you want it to be. The book showed doing holes in each of the pieces of paper and stringing the string through holes. I chose to just use tape because for me that was easier to get it to work. Okay, some of the other projects in our book. This one I thought looked really cool and I followed the directions exactly and I did it twice, but I couldn't get it to work. It's supposed to spread apart like a web from top to bottom, but mine just didn't look right. So I kind of gave up on that one, but you could check out the book and you could try it and see if you could get it to work. Lots of good ideas on just using paper to make a windmobile. Now the windmobiles that you often see will have like a straw or a piece of paper or something stiff up here and it hangs down. And the book takes you through from a single to a double to crisscross to triple to zigzag and ladder, and it just gets more and more complicated. I'm a beginner, so I really liked this butterfly that they had here, but I didn't think I wanted to tackle the triple just yet. So I went back and I tried to do the double. And I took my strips of paper and I looped it like they said. Again, now, because I'm impatient, I ended up using a tape and stapler because I wasn't patient enough to wait for glue. And then I took my little pipe cleaner. You could use a piece of ribbon. And I made my little butterfly, okay? Not as cute as what's in the book, but I'm pretty proud of it. And then I put it all together for my double mobile. Now, when you're working with straws, there's a couple of neat little tricks that they showed us in the book. One is you can take your straw and you can put a little snip in the straw. And when you do that, it will hold the string in place instead of it sliding up and down the straw like string sometimes does. 
The other thing just to remember if you are using straws, if you're like me and you have these bendy straws at home, that's really not gonna work when you start putting some weight on it. So you wanna snip that part off before you start to work with your straws. The other tip that was in the book that I thought was really interesting was I was gonna add this flower to the center of my butterflies. But when I punch a hole here in the top of the circle, that means that this part of the paper is going to be weaker. But all they did in the book was they took some Elmer's glue and they glued a circle around the circle. Now Elmer's glue or white school glue will dry clear, but it will dry clear with a little bit of a ridge to it. And then that way you are creating some reinforcement in your paper. So when it's spinning around on that thread, it doesn't tear as quickly and you can make your mobile last longer. Well, other things in this book that I thought were kind of interesting. Was the way that they did different shapes on the top, like a star. This one, they took the ladder design, but they ran zigzag through it to make a Christmas tree. Sometimes you can use mobiles to tell a story. This one uses something different on top. It has a twig that you can get from outside. You could even, if you wanted to, hang some live flowers on this or some live leaves. That might be kind of neat. This one uses a shoe box. And then this person has decided to tell the story of their family by hanging pictures of their family below it. A hoop or a hanger are also good things that you can use to hang your mobiles on. But mostly I liked this because it just gave me lots of really good ideas. And so even if I chose not to do exactly what the person who wrote this book did, I could still go through and take, you know, an idea from this page, an idea from this page, and put it all together. And that's really, friends, what art is all about. Now, back in this last section on wind socks, I want to show you just one more thing. A lot of you have seen these really decorative wind socks, and they're fun to hang outside on your porch if you have a porch. But the other thing you can do to help your windsock be more active is you can treat it like a pinwheel and you can put blades in your windsock. Now this is a very plain windsock. I haven't really decorated it yet. I've hung some ribbons on the bottom. But do you see how I cut the blades into the side? So those blades are gonna catch the wind and help turn my windsock around even faster. A quick tip, any work you do on your windsock, you want to do it while the paper is still flat. So attach your things on the bottom, cut in your blades, and then put your windsock and decorate it, color it, give it, make it look more interesting than Miss Deanna's here, and then put it all together at the end. All right, friends, I hope you've enjoyed making these mobiles with me. We're going to take, uh, we're going to back up and take a break so I can tell you just real quick about this artist who does windmill bills, windmobiles. His name is Alexander Calder. So now we've learned some ways to make wind catchers, but let me also remind you there are things that you can see around you if you're imagining the wind. So close your eyes for just a second. What are things that show you the wind? Maybe a kite? maybe a flower bending, maybe a paper bag rolling across the street. All of these are things that show you the wind. And there's an artist, his name is Alexander Calder. And Alexander Calder did a lot of sculpture, but his sculpture didn't stand still. His sculpture moved and it could show the wind. Some of his sculptures were outside and some of his sculptures were inside. Now I know this is hard to see this picture, but this is Mr. Calder installing one of his mobiles and he would make them out of metal and bright colored wire pieces. 
This is one that's down on the ground. This is one that doesn't move that's down on the ground. And this is one that's hanging from the ceiling. And even though these would be inside, they would be perfectly balanced. But the, the slightest little drift of air inside a museum or a business where they would be hanging would cause those brightly colored metal pieces to move. I'll include a link to some of his work in the description. And if you want to, you can look there, but you can also put his name in your search engine, follow it with the word activities, get an adult to help you, and then you can find other ideas for copying his work or getting ideas from his work. All right, now normally when we say goodbye, I say it like this. We wave goodbye like this. We wave goodbye like this. We clap our hands and stomp our feet. We wave goodbye like this. But we're going to do it different this time. We're going to pretend that we are those crazy wind socks that you see outside car dealerships and firework places. You know the ones where their arms and their heads are going all over the place. So we're gonna go to the right and then we're gonna go to the left, then we're gonna go down, and then up. Are you ready? Okay. We wave goodbye like this. We wave goodbye like this. We go down low and back up high. We wave goodbye like this. Thanks for visiting. Bye for now.